There are people who have made their life into an adventure. This is the case of Walter Bonatti. Perhaps his name will not be familiar to younger people, yet a few decades ago he became the protagonist of adventure that have inspired generations. An explorer, writer and photojournalist, but above all, a strong mountaineer, nicknamed the King of the Alps. Bonatti was an extraordinary man, capable of sleeping into the dark, almost on the top of K2, and returning down unskated, helping a companion who was first by. Bonatti has made impossible roads on the Alps, but today many people ask him at he himself if he were young and alive, mountaineering speaking, in the golden age of great climbs, or a few decades after the 60s, with the right phones what he could have done on the great giants of the Himalayas. His fame grew with the first Italian expedition on K2, a story that tormented with for about 50 years. As we know, K2 is the second highest mountain in the world, and this has always attracted people who wanted to climb into the top, but it wasn't easy. As some wrote, K2 is a mountain that is always trying to kill you. An incredible mountain, a triangle drawn by an achieved, which rises in a remote Karakoram Valley. A harsh and fascinating place, which culminates with the hidden peak of K2. The first serious attempt to climb K2 was undertaken in 1902 by Aleister Crowley, via the Northwest Ridge. In the early 19s, Modern transportation did not exist in the region. It took two weeks just to reach the foot of the mountain. After five costly attempts, Crowley troops in the tower. The next expedition, in 1909, led by Duke of the Abruzzi, on the Novo Asa de Abruzzi Spur. This would eventually become part of the standard road, but was abandoned at the time due to its steepness and difficulty. After trying to find a feasible alternative route, the Duke declared that K2 would never be climbed. The 1939 American Karakoram expedition led by Fritz Wiesner came near the summit but ended in disaster when the climbers disappeared on the mountain, perhaps for an avalanche. The 1953 attempt ending in failure after a storm pinned down a team for 10 days, during which Pete Schoening saved almost the entire team during a mass fall. Despite the retreat and tragic end, the expedition has been given iconic status in the mountaineering history. The 1954 Italian expedition finally succeeded in ascending to the summit of K2 via the Abruzzi Spur on 31 July 1954. The expedition was led by Ardito Desio, and the two climbers who reached the summit were Lino Lassedelli and Achille Compagnoni. Also on the expedition were Walter Bonatti and the Pakistani Unza porter Amir Mehdi, who both proved vital to the expedition's success in that they carried oxygen tanks for Lassedelli and Compagnoni. Bonatti was the youngest participant of the Italian expedition. However, years after the expedition, Bonatti found himself accused and at the center of a bitter controversy based on conflicting accounts of events which occurred during the ascent. Along with the climber Medi, Bonatti had the task to carry oxygen cylinders up to La Sedeli and Compagnoni at Camp 9, a summit attempt. However, Compagnoni had decided to place Camp 9 at the higher location than previously agreed with Bonatti. Bonatti and Medi reached a point close to Camp 9, but by this time night had fallen and Medi's condition had deteriorated. Bonatti knew that he and Medi needed the shelter of a tent to survive a night at this altitude without risk of frostbite. But the Camp 9 tent was placed at the end of a dangerous traverse across icy slopes and the visibility was too reduced to get there. Bonatti saw that Medi was in no condition to climb further or make a return to Camp 8, and was recurrently forced to endure an open bivouac without tent or sleeping bag. 
This cost Maddy his tools, while Bonatti was lucky to survive the terrible night unarmed. Bonatti was in the best physical condition of all the climbers, but Ardito Desio selected La Sedelli and Compagnoni. Had Bonatti joined the summit team, he would likely not have used supplement oxygen. Therefore, La Sedelli and Compagnoni's oxygen assisted climb could have been eclipsed. Compagnoni intended to discourage Bonatti from reaching the tent and participating in the final summit climb. In the morning of 31 July, after Bonatti and Medi had already begun their descent to the safety of Camp 8, Compagnoni and Lassedelli retrieved the oxygen cylinders left at the bivouac seat and reached the summit of K2 at 6 pm. Bonatti was later accused by Compagnoni of using some of the oxygen to survive his bivouac, causing the climbers to run out of oxygen early than expected of the summit day. Bonatti had denied because both the mask and the regulator were at the camp night. Lassedelli contended that the oxygen had in fact run out. However, he attributed this not to Bonatti's alleged use of oxygen, but to the physical exertion of the climb causing the use of more oxygen than expected. For a long time, Bonatti was accused and vilified by a part of the climbing community, but over time, the growing amount of evidence in the soup of his version of the facts proved his honesty. Only 53 years later, did the Italian Alpine Club officially recognize that both La Sedelli and Compagnoni lied in their account of the ascent and that Bonatti's version of the facts was accurate? Bonatti tried to organize a solo ascent of K2 without oxygen the following year to put the record straight but couldn't get the backing, so he retreated to Kermayor, where he became a mountain guide in 1954. In 1958, Bonatti joined an Italian expedition and he climbed together with Carlo Mauri the inviolated Gashenbrunn 4, the 17th highest mountain on earth, not too far from the K2. This mountain is still on climbing in winter. Bonatti died in 2011 due to a cancer, after a life dedicated to exploration and subsequently alongside his partner, the actress Rosanna Podesta. In 2016, his mountaineering equipment was donated by the actress Children's to the Turi Mountain Museum. The material was donated to a structure of the Italian Alpine Club. Yes, the association with which Bonatti fought hard for over 50 years, before being officially recognized to the truth about the facts of the great first ascent of K2. Because Bonatti was much more than a mountaineer legend and an adventure travel journalist for magazines, above all, he was able to reach the hearts of those who listened or read him.